Today, we would like to present to you the seven mistakes that we wish we knew before planting our first entropic system. For those who are new to the channel, this is the story of Jimmy and Aurora, two passionate beings that dare to plant an agroforestry system without practical experience or guidance using all information and knowledge found on the internet. In autumn 2022, we planted 1,000 square meters on the degraded land of my grandparents in central Romania. For many decades, this agricultural land and all the fields around it were used for corn monoculture to feed the animals. We were very impatient to start planting our first trees, dreaming about the fruits they would bear. We bought grafted trees, shrubs, bushes, collected many cuttings and thousands of seeds of anything we could find. We had some practical experience with permaculture, which we've been researching for a couple of years already, and we were especially enthusiastic about the idea of creating a food forest. We discovered syntropy only one year prior to the plantation, but we were really inspired by its potential of regeneration and couldn't wait to try it. Having the land available was for us a great learning opportunity. We could put theory into practice, experiment and gain experience and confidence. We didn't know if we would live there in the future, but we still decided to commit and invest our time, money and efforts into this exercise. A year after plantation, we could already observe what worked and what didn't. The many mistakes that were made are valuable teachings for the next plantations, and we hope our experience can be helpful for you too, in case you'd like to try it. First things first, prepare the soil before planting. Coming from permaculture and the no-dig ideology, we thought any type of disturbance of the soil was evil and causing destruction, which is true, but it's also true that the soil that's been plowed every year has no structure and is very compacted with zero aeration and draining capacity. That was the case with our very heavy clay soil, with no organic matter, where roots have a lot of difficulty making it through. What we did was prepare in advance big holes for the trees with a mini excavator, which we are afraid did also some damage, compacting the sides. While waiting for the plants to arrive, the soil from the holes was exposed to the sun for some time, and that was a big mistake, because it became rock hard, blocks of clay that were impossible to break and handle. Looking back, what we would do differently is use a subsoiler, or a ripper, on the whole area, to break the compaction deep down. After that, we would use a ripper tooth, which is, in, which is an excavator that, instead of a bucket, has a tooth that can move in all directions to aerate the soil along the lines. Finally, with a tiller, we would make the soil fine and level on the surface. In clay soil, we would do all the machinery work in autumn, before the big rains, when the soil is dry or a bit moist, but not wet and muddy, because heavy machinery in clay could do a lot of damage. If you don't want to use machines for any type of reasons, there are ways to prepare the soil by hand. You can double dig the whole line, or only the nest, by digging out the first 30-40 cm and then aerate the lower part with a spade. Second point is start with a very small surface, to test what works and what doesn't, in your soil and climate. We planted around 1000 square meters, the two of us, with no real practical experience behind and no idea what we were getting into. The preparation and the planting was very demanding physically, and we could have focused our energies better on a smaller patch instead of spreading ourselves too thin. I was a bit under pressure to cover the whole area since it was available, but the motto, more is better, is not always true. Because the surface was so big and we didn't have all the support plants that we would have needed, we didn't plant very densely. Which brings us to the third point. Plant more densely. We did an amazing job collecting a variety of fruit, nut and tree seeds, which ended up sprouting and growing, but most of them only reached about 15 centimeters because of the impenetrable and compacted clay soil. We did plant many cuttings of willow, poplar and elderflower every 30 centimeters, but that was not enough. Some of them didn't make it, for example, all elderflower perished once it stopped raining, but even having a cutting every 30 centimeters, you'll have a gap the first years, which becomes an empty space where all type of spontaneous plants can colonize. So, next point is, don't start with expensive plants. When you start with a poor soil, the chances that your grafted fruit trees are going to thrive are low. Even shrubs like currants and gooseberry that we planted in the system 
grew at first, made fruit, but all died back during the summer because they had no shade and humidity. Our emergence didn't grow fast enough to come and protect them. That's a big lesson right here. The priority is to get strong pioneer plants growing. These will already be present in your area, so just look around. Afterwards, the more demanding fruit trees have way better conditions to work with. Also, when it's possible, grow from seed and just graft them later on with the desired varieties. Next point is starting a nursery. In this plantation, we planted cuttings, seeds, and bare root plants. Some made it, but many didn't even start, where they were too weak to make it through the first summer. Next time, we'll start our own nursery one year before to multiply all the plants that we can't afford to lose. This way, we would be able to plant already grown seedlings that are stronger and distribute them precisely. These seeds and cuttings are collected locally and present a good adaptation to our conditions. If you don't have time but you have a budget, you could just buy the plants from a nursery, which would also be fine. Next point is living mulch or straw. We wanted to cover the soil along the lines using straw and leaves in order to enrich the soil and protect it from the heat and the drought. However, we noticed two things. Sometimes it doesn't let the water through and it doesn't decompose very quickly. Perhaps the low soil life and the lack of shade are part of the problem. So creating a living mulch with comfrey and aromatic herbs under the trees and green manure between the lines could be a win-win, making us independent from external inputs like straw and getting the advantages of more life and photosynthesis. Next point is leaving gaps in the succession. Instead of introducing a big diversity of species which aren't necessarily adapted to our environment, we would rather focus on fewer species that we know thrive in our conditions. To get to know which species are strongest within our conditions, we had to experiment. This mistake is forcing us to reconsider our concept of mistakes. Since no book could teach us what exactly works on our land, it can give general ideas, but it can't give us a clear recipe for success. That's it for our lessons. We hope this is useful and inspires you to take the first step towards regeneration. Theory can only take you so far. The rest comes from trial and error. The biggest mistake you can make is being scared of making mistakes and not even trying.